Looks like an electron tube. Hmm. Max! Max! I've got a valve to test! Max! 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 Where are you? Clem? 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 Max? Clem? Max? Clem? Max? Max? Clem? Max? Clem? Oh. Hey! <laughs> nice to see you! I've got a valve to test for you. You're kidding me. Yes. Let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to Element 14 Presents, I'm Clem and this episode is all about electron tubes and test equipment for electron tubes. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering and more. Can you tell me something about that? Oh, this is wonderful. This is a Volvo ED, a large triode, and it is used for audio amplifiers. Woo! Single-ended. So it could worth, be worth a pretty penny. Uh, how much do you think? I have no idea. <laughs> Depends on the emission of, um, of the quality of this tube. Um, it could be 500 euro or even 1000 euro. Or it could be nothing if it's broken. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Can we tell that it's broken or if it's working? Uh, we can tell if it's working or broken and we can even tell um, the exact specifications of this tube. Oh, uh, I guess you can't do that with a multimeter. <laughs> no, you need a tube tester. I guess you have one. Yes, exactly. Let's find out how this tube is performing. Okay. Ooh, now that I know it's probably expensive, I'm gonna handle it with care. <laughs> Here is my Röthers tube tester. Ooh! Yeah, ooh! <laughs> it's a computer-based um, test system um, invented by Helmut Weigel in Germany. Mm -hmm. And it's something you can't actually buy. Um, you have to build it on your own. Oh, you have to build the whole thing? Yeah. Could we do that? Sure. Let's build one. <laughs> Hey, we have parts! How about this one here? This one? This one? Or this one? Here? Whoa, 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 that one, that one over there. Which one? The, the, on the top. This here? Yeah. Ooh, that looks like a winner. Okay. Here you have it. Electron tubes were state of the art for a very long time in the electronics history. From the 1900s onwards until the late 1960s, early 1970s, they were pretty much used in any form or shape of equipment. Diodes are the easiest form, triodes are pretty much the equivalent of uh, general purpose transistors nowadays and they had a lot of different use cases. There are even specialized vacuum tubes for very special purposes like x-rays or even CO2 lasers. Those are electron tubes, I own one. So I have an actual tube in use. And if you look behind me, you can see a tube radio over there that also works with real electron tubes. And that is its main purpose today. So they're still not really obsolete. Audiophiles and audio enthusiasts in general like the sound of tube amplifiers. So there is even a big market today for new old stock or even newly produced vacuum tubes. 
Vacuum tubes come in a lot of different sizes and varieties depending on their purpose and they can be used in a ton of things. Even that thing here that you might have seen in some shots of, on this channel, that is a vacuum tube. That is also a vacuum tube, but those are used for extremely high output senders. So that's not something that we will probably uh, put to action on this channel. But maybe we build some audio circuits and to be sure that I have working tubes and that they have the right characteristics and even to identify tubes that have no markings on them anymore, that is where this tube tester comes in. And for all you computer enthusiasts, of course, a lot of tubes were used in early computers like the ENIAC and there are even people today trying to build vacuum tube based computers, completely silicon free. I have links, a list with a lot of useful uh, resources if you're interested more in the topic on element14.com. So there are people that are building with tubes, people that uh, collect them and a lot of knowledge bases linked there. So check them out. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. The device that we are building today is a Röhrtest V10, which means Röhrentestgerät, version 10, which is German and means tube testing device version number 10. It was designed and conceived by Helmut Weigel in Germany. It's not an open source project. It's his copyright, but it's a very special DIY project because it's such a specialized advanced te uh, test equipment that you can't even buy it. It would be not economically viable to produce this in mass because there are so little people that really need this device and would spend several thousand uh, dollars for it because that is what it would probably cost to pre-make it. So. If you really want that, you have to build it yourself. You can buy the software and the firmware, a pre-programmed microcontroller directly from the designer. You can even source PCBs from him and then you source all the other parts on websites like Funnel, for example. You can download the manuals and the actual description uh, directly from his homepage for free. You just have to pay when you want to build the unit, you need to obtain the pre-programmed microcontroller and the software license from him. But you can try out the software with examples and get used to it and look at the documentation to see if this is a project you would like to do. And I have to tell you, it's not for the faint of heart. This is really tough. So you have to solder a lot and you have to be really careful with that because there are very high voltages involved. Helmut Weigl's Röhr test is for me the best example on how documentation should be done. It has an extensive manual instructions and explanation on how this unit works that is so detailed it's hundreds of pages. In my opinion an example on how this should be done. So even if you're not going to build this and I know most of you won't, check out the documentation and learn how this should be done. All these files are linked at his homepage, Röhrentest.de, and I've also compiled a list of useful resources regarding this project and regarding tubes in general and some interesting channels that you should check out at element14.com. Here's a quick explanation on how the road test in general works. I can't give you the detailed explanation, that would be way too long, but this is how it works. All the tubes in the world have different pinouts, have different requirements on voltages they need to perform. 
and you have different ways of measuring them. So how do you compile that into one device? With some other tube testers you have to fiddle around with a lot of cables, then there are testing cards that set specific values for each tube, so you would have to obtain those testing cards to even test a specific type of tube. But with the Rode test everything is different. You just plug in your tube into a socket adapter that I put on the Rode test, select the tube from a database and start testing. The Rode test has like a hundred relays in there, I haven't counted them, that allow you to set all the different pinouts. So it obtains the pinout from a database, connects the right values of power to the respective pins so it can obtain any configuration of pins on the same socket because tubes that have the same socket don't have to have the same pinout. Yes, that's a thing. Yeah, old electronics. Always be aware of the pinout. It connects them correctly for this device and then it runs specific tests according to the data sheet of that special tube and measures the emission that comes out of it. It can even make sound tests and clear factor. I have no idea how to translate that in English, but it measures like a ton of things and then it gives you a printout with all the tested measurements. It traces the curves of the tubes so you not only know if they are working in general, but you also know how good they work and if they behave regularly or if they behave irregular, if they behave reproducible. That's all something that you couldn't just do with any other device. So it's extremely advanced and very flexible and it can even identify tubes, which is absolutely mind boggling to me. I have put a lot of hours, I think 15 hours of pure soldering in there, but I'm sorry to say I'm still missing some components that are pretty hard to get, so I couldn't finish my Rö test in time, but Max has a completed unit and now we will put my Valvo ED in his tube tester and find out if it's working and how good it's working. This is the software of the Rue test and it is wonderful. You select the tube that you want to test, in example the ED and there it is. You select it and you start the measurements. It's that easy. We should see the anode current rising now. We need 60 milliamps for 100% and this tube has 96 milliamps. The great thing about the Rue test is it applies the different voltages the tube needs, exactly like with the data sheet. Uh, we have 4 volt filament voltage and 250 volts anode voltage. And that's exactly what the Reuters delivers. We give the tube a little time to settle and then we will click on test. Right now we have close to 100 milliamps, so this tube is very strong. Another great thing about the Rue test is the data sheet, the printout. And what do we see here? This tube should have 60 milliamps and it has 100. So we have 100, 167% emission. That's excellent. This is an official data sheet, uh, the spec sheet of this tube and I give it my go. Well that was a lot of fun. We've soldered up some very complicated test equipment to know if my vintage tubes are actually worth anything. Spoiler, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure to have you here and I hope to see you again soon. Oh, we will. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, Sven? Yeah? This yeah. direction. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. Max? Max! Now that we have tested my Valvo ED, I'm extremely pleased that it's first working, that it's really good working and it's basically in pristine quality. And this tube was made in 1944. It's 77 years old and it still works and that it's a really high quality audio tube. So if you got your interest sparked in analog electronics into tubes or maybe audio projects, check out the compiled resource list that I put on element14.com. You will find a link to Max Koshu's YouTube channel where you can check out more vintage stuff and teardowns. And I've also, of course, provided all the links 
referencing the Rotest device and some other useful links around tubes and vintage electronics. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.